Welcome to today's lesson on meiosis. Today we're going to talk about both the purpose for meiosis and what happens during meiosis and look at each of the stages. Now, the major purpose for meiosis is for cells to take and cut their chromosome number in half for sexual reproduction purposes. Certain organisms go through sexual reproduction where they take a cell from one parent and a cell from another parent, join those two cells together to make a new organism. If we continually did that, we would not have the same number of chromosomes. So let's take humans for instance. We have 46 chromosomes in our body cells, and if we took 46 from the mother and 46 from the father, we would add them together and get 92 chromosomes. And then we would take the 92 from that organism and the 92 from the next one, and we would add them together and we would just keep adding chromosomes but we want to keep our chromosome number the same. So what happens is our cells go through meiosis. We take our 46 chromosomes and cut them in half to 23. So you get 23 chromosomes from the mother, 23 from the father. When you join them together, you get the 46 that you need. So the purpose of meiosis is to take a diploid cell, a cell that has two sets of chromosomes in it, and cut those chromosomes in half to one set of chromosomes. So let's take a look at some of these stages of meiosis. Meiosis has two complete phases, and each of those phases has four individual phases within it. Those four phases are the same phases as mitosis. So prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So prophase one happens in meiosis one. Prophase one is very similar to prophase and mitosis. However, we have a difference in the chromosomes. So, spindle fibers form, the nucleus dissolves, the chromosomes condense from long strands into a tight chromosome. The difference is that the chromosome pairs, so the one you got from your mother and the one that you got from the fa your father that contain the same genes, pair up. So you get all of these pairs together. So let's say our pink chromosomes came from our mother and our blue ones came up from our father. When they do this, this is called a tetrad. Now the tetrads are so close together that sometimes down at the bottom of the tetrad you can get this piece where the two chromosomes cross over. Okay? There are two parts mixed together and what happens is each individual piece breaks off and goes on to the next chromosome. So this one has one set of genes, all from the father. This chromatid has genes mostly from the father but a few from the mother. This one has a few from the mother and very few from the father and this is an entire chromosome from the mother. So you can tell the differences in the genes, I've color coded these. So, prophase one, spindle fibers form, nucleus dissolves, chromosomes condense and pair up with their match, and crossing over can happen. The next stage is metaphase one. This is where the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. Metaphase, middle. The chromosomes, again, line up in pairs. Because remember, we want one set of DNA in every cell instead of two. So because of that, we need to separate those chromosomes that are like each other. So they, the paired chromosomes, the tetrads, line up along the center of the cell, and the spindle fibers are hopefully attached correctly. Once that happens, we move on to anaphase. In anaphase, the chromosomes will move to opposite sides of the cell, Okay, so you get, you have two moving to one side and two moving to the other side. And then when we move to telophase, you get a new nucleus forming. You get the cleavage furrow forming in our animal cells. And the cells start to split and they fully split in cytokinesis. So here we have two chromosomes in one cell and two chromosomes in another cell so that we have our DNA that's 
pretty much cut in half so far. Then we're going to move on to meiosis two. So we have our two cells that now each, instead of four chromosomes, have two chromosomes, but they still have two chromatids, so that's still two copies of the DNA. So we're going to go through uh, meiosis two and prophase one, very similar. Chromosomes are already condensed. The nucleus that formed in telophase is now going to dissolve, and the spindle fibers are going to reform. From here, chromosomes line up along the center of the cell. When they line up along the center of the cell, the spindle fibers are attached. In anaphase, the individual chromatids are now pulled to opposite sides. And then finally, telophase, we end up with a single copy of DNA in each of the four cells. And you'll notice that each of the four cells contains a different set of DNA due to crossing over and also due to something called independent assortment. Independent assortment means that the chromosomes don't line up all of your dad's chromosomes on one side and all of your mom's chromosomes on the other side. They mix up all together. And because of this, each of the new cells is going to have a different set of DNA because of independent assortment. And this leads to the reason why so many different people can have lots of kids, but all those kids look different. Even though it's the same two parents, the kids look different because they all have different sets of DNA. This is only two chromosomes. Imagine if you had the 23 chromosomes. Okay. So many different ways to mix them up, and that's why you have so many different people in the world. So this is meiosis. Meiosis is the purpose for, the purpose of meiosis is to split the chromosome numbers in half to produce haploid cells from diploid cells and to do it effectively for sexual reproduction.